so we have a little bit of an update as you can see by the bonnet colour we have a different car now we had I had some problems a little while ago um, last week the DC motor I was doing some motorway testing um, and I was at 50 miles an hour for uh, I was at 50 mile an hour for too long for maybe 20 miles and the motor overheated and blew the insulation and blew the carbon uh, what do you call them? I don't my head now the brushes I believe uh, I damaged most of the brushes like cosmetically it's not the same as my blue one and when I went to go I actually went to see going green and a lot of the cars there that I had was the best condition cosmetically um, so I was quite lucky for that it's just a shame that the DC motor didn't quite accommodate what I required so now this this grey car is in fact a AC motor and driving back home with it I put the batteries in it going green and I was able to do 40 to 50 comfortably on main roads, which is all I wanted the DC to do. So um, it's a win-win really in terms of I've got a new car and I've got a ton of spares off the other car that I can switch over should I need it. There's only small minor discrepancies with the DC and the AC chassis um, body. But what I think I will end up doing just to tidy this grey one up, it's a bit faded with the sun and I don't know if a bit of polish will take it there or shine it up. Um, I'm thinking of getting it body wrapped just uh, just so that just so that it looks kind of half decent. Mechanically, it's great and it runs amazing. Like the normal the normal drive mode is basically the fo the fast mode in the DC model. So we've gone from we've gone from uh, 40 base speed to a up to 55 boost speed. Now there is a speed limiter in the controls which I'm not going to touch. But uh, people have said they've had these G-Wizzes go up to 75 miles an hour, which is crazy, but not exactly safe. So, I mean, I wouldn't mind it doing 60, but realistically, this is fine. I only ever wanted it to do 50 on main roads, just so that I had, just so that I could keep up the traffic and not have lorries overtaking me all the time and things like that. So, we'll see how this goes. I've just got to refit the Type 2 connector and, and uh, refit, just refit a couple of them and refit the over. And then we should be good to go. Also, the great thing about the AC is that it has regen fitted. And um, this regen, I don't think say every time I took my foot off the pedal and we're going down the hill, I can. Uh, I can uh, recharge the batteries a little bit. Now the way the now the way the AC motor works compared to the DC is that uh, so there's no brushes. Now what I feel that I may have had trouble with with the DC is that um, especially when I'm towing and going down the Dorset and Devonshire hills, what I've been told is that. Under a certain RPM or like even stationary, when you're trying to tow a heavier weight or you're putting a lot more amps into it to get it to go, it basically turns into a coil heater. And I feel like I may have done this at some point, especially because the DC was only tested to run at 40 mile trips. Um, so I've been doing 150 mile doing it, and I've, I've probably done around 800 miles in the car since I had it. And what this has effectively done is possibly the damage over that amount of time so that when I was on the motorway it just completely overheated and uh, and, it, and it busted my uh, and it busted the brushes and took out all the insulation and off of that and overheated the motor so uh, that was effectively done and uh, so what I'm thinking of doing is stripping the car out And I'm wondering whether I can turn it into a sleeping pod trailer to tow behind the G-Wiz, which would be quite interesting, a G-Wiz to a G-Wiz. Now the only thing is it depends on the train, so I've got a few factors to consider before I ever consider turning that into a trailer into a sleeping pod. Um, but it's fully watertight, it's got its locks and 
everything, it would be great. Uh, maybe a winter project, so I can come in the winter. Now, one other thing that I did have a problem with, I thought I'd broke the AC yesterday. I, uh, all I did was wire in my lithium chargers, and I had it on charge. And I was wondering why the car wouldn't, um, wouldn't switch on. So I, <laughs> I was working my brain trying to figure it out because the same thing happened when I was, uh, <laughs> when I was on the, when I was on the DC, and I had to jump start the contact to get it to work. But what I've actually realised is there's a little switch in the cap. When you open the cap to charge the car up, the, uh, it stops the car from turning on him so you can't drive away with the plug in the car. I never realised this before, so I went and found the manual for the AC cap because that's the manual directly available. And uh, so I, uh, I had a look at that and realised that it was the uh, it was the cap preventing me from turning the car on. So everything's great. I even have a working original charger in the back. So instead of going, so this is what I'm quite happy with is that instead of worrying about the DC to DC converter and all of that stuff, it's all built into the charging system. Everything is standard in here now, and even the channel flow for. I mean, what I, what I had the problem with before as well is that there's all these other components, and once you pull the charger up, you've got just uh, you've got other units hanging around that uh, that worked with the charger like the ventilation system etc there was a hole in the ventilation system and so with this setup everything is complete the only thing i think i have to do now is to wire up the 12 volt fans in the back which this car has and the uh, and those 12 volt fans will ensure that the car is uh, the controller stays cool now it is also air cooled so i shouldn't have a problem unless there's really hot weather but yeah for the time being works and I'm quite happy with the AC, it just needs a bit of work cosmetically, but that's fair enough, and I'm willing to put that in over time and uh, make it a nice car.